and social media. It's something that every parent is dealing with. A study in the medical journal JAMA Psychiatry finds that adolescents who spend more than three hours per day on social media have doubled the rate of mental health issues like anxiety and depression. And that is alarming. Following last year's advisory on the effects of social media on youth mental health, the United States Surgeon General writing a New York Times op-ed calling for warning labels on social media platforms like those found on cigarettes, warning of the possible detrimental effects on younger users. And joining us now is United States Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Morthy. Good to see you and thanks for joining us. It's good to see you too. Thanks for having me. All right, so why the warning signs and warning labels on social media platforms? Well, we're living in the middle of a youth mental health crisis that I have said is the most pressing public health issue of our time. And it is, turns out that social media has become an important contributor to that youth mental health crisis. It's why last year I issued an advisory on this subject because the most common question I was getting from parents was about social media. They wanted to know, is it safe for my kids? And the bottom line is not only do we not have enough data to say that social media is safe for our kids, but increasingly the data is telling us that there's an association between social media use and mental health harms for adolescents. I think it's important that parents are warned about this. I think it's important they know what we know, and that's where a warning label comes in. It's part of a broader strategy that we must take to ultimately make social media safer for our kids. A warning label is something that would have to be approved by Congress. I'm curious, what would this even look like, and do you really think it's gonna keep kids off of social media? Mm -hmm. So here's what a warning label would look like. This would be a digital warning label, and it would appear regularly when one was using social media. The exact design of it, the frequency with which it appears, that would all be determined in a scientific testing process uh, that we would undergo after Congress authorized the label. That's what we do with tobacco and alcohol labels. And the good news about labels is that we thankfully know from experience that these labels actually do work. In the case of tobacco labels, they are effective in increasing awareness and in changing behavior. But again, they have to be paired with real actions that Congress must take to protect kids from harmful content like violence and sexual content, to protect them from harassment and bullying, which so many young people experience online, and to also protect them from the kind of features that social media platforms have I would seek to prey on the developing brains of young kids and ultimately lead them to excessive use, which comes at the expense of sleep, in-person interaction, and physical activity. And Vivek, you know, you're a parent, I know, of two children uh, in, in grade school. I'm, my kids are a little bit older, but for parents listening today who are concerned about this, can you just put on your, your parent doctor hat for a second and talk through some tips? Obviously, they're age dependent, but what can parents do uh, to help their children until that legislation possibly gets passed? As a parent, here's what, what my wife and I have decided we're gonna do for our kids. Our kids are six and seven right now, but uh, they're growing up fast. And we've decided that we are number one gonna wait until after middle school to start considering whether they use social media. We'll reassess in high school based on their maturity, the safety of the platforms, and whether or not there are safety standards in place. But for kids who are already on social media, here's what I'd recommend. Creating tech-free zones in your child's day to protect sleep, in-person interaction, and physical activity. That could look like making sure that meal times are free of technology, both kids and parents, making sure that an hour before bedtime, we take away devices and then only give them back in the morning to protect the quality and quantity of a child's sleep. But finally, Jen, th none of this is easy to do alone. I've talked to so many parents who say, what do I do when my kid comes up to me and says, everyone else is on social media in my class. Do you want me to be the only one who's left out? And that's why we as parents need to not only talk about this more openly, recognize there's no shame around struggling with this, but we also need to make pacts with one another to follow some of these rules and limit, limits so that it's not only easier for us because we have more support, but our kid knows that they're not the only one who is having to deal with limits, yeah. healthy limits on their use of social media. I think all parents will agree with you mm -hmm. on that one. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Doc. Thanks.